So this is just a little uh, practical printing update, I guess you could call it. We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. This summer, I had to replace my hot water tank, and we ended up getting, with discounts and everything, we ended up getting a heat pump hot water tank over a standard electric hot water tank. Now, it was the middle of the summer, and it was screaming hot and humid here in Connecticut at the time, so I did a quick half done. So anyway, I'll show a picture of it right here with uh, my drain. Now, a heat pump has a condensation drain. It's basically a... a dehumidifier and by dehumidifying in the middle of the summer when it's hot and humid there's two basic elements there's a hot element and a cold element and the hot element produces heat and the cold element produces cold but the cold element builds up condensation in the summer because of the humidity anyway so it's got this um the condensation tube so originally i just slapped this condensation tube into a little bucket and uh used a garden hose that was all kinked and let it drip into the bucket, and I had to come down here a couple times a, a week and empty the little bucket, which was kind of stupid and annoying, but it got it done. Oh, over the Christmas vacation here, I finally went and got all the parts, which most of which I've had already, and put a proper condensation tube off the tank into our drainage, our regular septic drains. And I'll show you over here. What I'm talking about, it's hooked up into this pipe, which was actually already here because we had a dehumidifier down here. Um, when I put the pipe on, it was pre-coiled, so I didn't have to bend it or add extra elbows, other than this first one here and the one coming out the other end. But it was sagging, and as it fills up with water, it would sag more. So, I had to 3D print that bracket. Which was cool. Now, I could have bought one, but most of them aren't set up really to support that. I did an original one, which is this one. But I found when it mounted, and it might be harder to see, where the coil is, right there, um, where it's coiled, it needs to actually be in an angle instead. If you look at this one, it's straight. It needs to be in an angle, so it, as the pipe comes into it, it this, this piece right here needs to be in an angle. I probably could have flexed it and strapped it in, but I didn't need to. I also put a hole in it here, so if I needed to, I could just put a zip tie on it. It's just the condensation pipe. It's not a pressure line or anything like normal hot water, you know, hot or cold water. Um, I did only have the piece of red that should be blue if I had done it right and to code and everything. Not that it matters, but it should actually be blue because it's cold water, not hot water. But it doesn't matter. It's coming out of the tank as blue, and it goes into the drain as blue. So, And I know where it is. But um, So I made the little support, and I 3D printed it and mounted it there. Now, one last thing that has nothing to do with it, but if you ever do this kind of work, I will show you here. As you can see, there is a wire in the wall right there. Of course, it's right at the height I needed to do. I was originally going to use longer screws. But if you ever do this kind of thing, always make sure you're aware of things like wiring in the walls and so on and so forth, because you have to be aware of that. So I ended up using, instead of like two inch sheetrock screws was my original intention that's what I had in my hand I uh I used some small I think they're a one inch uh door jam receiver screws which I have tons of too but any old screw but again try and you know if it's non-structural and you don't need to carry that much weight there's no real weight there it's just holding the tube in place um use shorter screws in case there's a pipe or an electrical or something else in your wall that you don't know about so you don't short yourself out with a big long screw because you generally don't need a big long screw but that's about it I'll go over some of the quick design features I did there's the bracket and how it's all set up and let's go up to the computer so here's my bracket that I designed pretty basic Nothing too crazy in it. A couple of screw holes. Recessed angles in it for uh, to accept the screw head. Let me show you. I'm not going to recreate it. But I'm actually just going to use Fusion's timeline and start from the beginning. 
let's turn on the sketches and the first thing I did was make a sketch make a very simple block give it some dimensions and the next step whoops I gotta stop the sketch then I just extruded it a set amount now I was just guessing at all this I have a pretty good eye with this where I've been doing this kind of stuff my whole life that I can usually estimate lengths and stuff someone should probably take a measurement and the next thing I did was make the wall mount plate basic everyday sketch nothing fancy I put some fillets on it you can put the fillets in this in the uh, right in the model when you're sketching or you can do use the uh, the fillet tool after either way that's the one thing I really really like about fusion is there's usually at least two or three ways to do something if not way more um, I just noticed I got sixes and fives here <laughs> not a big deal extrude that that's what you get there put a hole in it again I used a hole that has a recess here so I can uh, you know, so I could use a screw and have it set inside, have it recessed and flush. And then I just mirrored that hole over to the other side. Instead of trying to make that hole and finding the location again, you can just mirror it. This is much faster and easier. Not only that, when you mirror it, if I edit this hole for some reason, this hole will, will match it. Then I put a fillet on this corner. As you can see here, it was square and now it's got a fillet. Give it a little structural strength really probably didn't need it it's more of a looks thing and than structure now here's the fun part is i made an angled plane plane an angle click on an edge and then rotate it to whatever angle you want that's how you do a plane at an angle it's very simple then you use that plane and you click on it make sure it turns colors so it's selected and you make a sketch and in this case, I sketched a little circles and then put a line through it because basically I just want this shape here. As you can see, I didn't put the line in the middle. I put it a little high so I knew my pipe would kind of snap into the hole. That makes sense. And then I extrude that. Now the catch here is, let me rehome that. The catch here is, is when I extruded it, Instead of just being a distance that it defaults to here, I said to object and then clicked on the bottom face. And that made it so that the bottom of this is all flush. So this will be my printer's bed. That's the print bed right there and it's a nice flat surface. By using the uh, to object instead of the, the standard distance, I was allowed to make a flat surface on the bottom because it'll it'll end up in the same plane as this surface right here that I selected then I extruded out the middle once again doing the same thing and that way the middle's a nice even knockout put another hole in it which is really unnecessary I put it in there for I could zip tie it in next thing I didn't like was that this was an angle here on this face I want it flush with this plane right here on the top of the bracket so there's probably an easier way i couldn't think of it in my head right away and again there's multiple ways to do everything in fusion so what i did was i extended my extrusion way up high and then i drew a surface here in a new sketch which i made sure was wider than this and taller than this and then i just extrude cut extruded over it and that made a nice flat surface on the top so now the top and the bottom of this whole bracket are, are one even plane and then uh the last thing i did was just put some quick fillets on this so the pipe would snap in without sharp edges and getting caught and it's just cleaner neater really not necessary it's just nicer looking and that's it save it as an sdl and send it off to the printer Hope you enjoyed that. It's pretty simple. You can apply this to other basic hangers and tools and whatever in uh, your household. You can use Fusion 360 and your 3D printer to do very practical, simple prints from around your house. Saves you a lot of 
doesn't really save you anything. It doesn't save you time. It doesn't save you money because I probably could have bought this packet for like a quarter. <laughs> but it was much more fun printing it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed that. Have a good day.